In this video, we will build a friction brake system model using an agentic workflow with Dyad. When the driver presses the brake pedal, the braking system applies a force, causing the brake pads to clamp onto a spinning disc or drum, thus creating friction that resists the wheel's rotation and can bring the vehicle to a stop. This friction creates heat that causes the brake pads and disc to warm up. Engineering a brake system requires meeting both mechanical and thermal requirements for safe vehicle operation. Utilizing a modern workflow to engineer this system requires physical models of the friction brake in the vehicle. Here we will develop system models that are typical of the ones required for model-based systems engineering. But we will do so using an AI agent, basically by posing the problem that we want to solve and ultimately ending up with models that execute and predict the mechanical and thermal dynamics of the system. Agentic workflows are fundamentally altering the way that the human and computer interface works leading to the potential for massive gains in engineering productivity and efficiency. These agentic workflows are a core part of our Dyad product and will be demonstrated in this short video. We start by asking the agent to help us create a model for the friction brake that can capture the relevant physical interactions. The agent then does research and provides a mathematical formulation that meets our specification. This step alone is massively helpful with just one simple query, you potentially have a model that can be implemented immediately, along with reasonable parameter values that are representative of our application. We can even easily iterate on the model by asking the agent to refine the formulation. As you can see from the responses, the agent plans and then returns with a new formulation, including nicely summarizing the changes requested. These changes can be as complex as asking for different mathematical formulations for the physics, or as simple as changing the interface for the model. Once we are happy with the formulation, we ask the agent to implement the model for us in Dyad. The agent knows which component primitives are available and utilizes them to implement the model. Now we have executable, fully parameterized code that represents the physics. Note that the code is well documented and very nicely formatted. We also ask the agent to create a unit test that exercises the model under specified boundary conditions. We can test that the component is behaving correctly and also subsequently use these tests to help refine the formulation and model parameterization. This agent is not just capable of generating the model code, but is also contextually aware of the models we are creating, the relevant physics and expected responses, and also key numerical considerations. We now have one part of the model that takes a brake command and generates the resulting friction torque and heat based on the vehicle boundary conditions. Because we are also planning to work with the model moving forward in a graphical interface, we can add an icon to the model. This icon will also appear later in the video when we use this brake component in the full system model. We can go through the exact same process to develop the thermal model for the brake. This part of the model will provide the thermal dynamics of the brake system. We start by asking the agent to help us create a thermal model for the brake system that captures the relevant thermal interactions. Again, we go through several iterations on the model formulation, model interface, and model parameterization. Note that the agent is also reasoning regarding our proposed formulation changes. It even provides us information back regarding how these changes will impact the thermal dynamics in different temperature regimes so that we can evaluate whether these changes are appropriate for our modeling needs. After we ask the agent to implement the final model formulation, we again ask for a test case to help validate the model. Note the really interesting interaction with the agent. The agent knows how much heat is put into the system in the test and notes that the heat in the model does not balance, a sign that there is potentially an issue with the energy balance in the model. The agent then performs an energy analysis by looking at the individual terms in the equations. The agent rightly concludes that the system is not run to steady state, and thus should be run longer and proceeds to do so. This is completely unprompted, high-level thinking by the agent, providing insights that can help even experienced engineers rapidly develop and validate models. Now that we have a model created by the agent to our specifications, we also want to visually see the components and how they are connected. There are no graphical annotations associated with this model as generated by the agent, but we can ask the tool to render the diagram and automatically lay out the components. This graphical information is now part of the model, thus ensuring that the model can easily be used and modified in graphical form moving forward. We now have a second part of the model with a compatible interface to the brake that captures the essential thermal dynamics of the brake system. Again, this component is flexible and fully parameterized for ongoing usage. The last part of the model is a representation of the vehicle. Again, we start by asking for a simple vehicle model that will match the interfaces from our brake and brake thermal models. Because there are so many different ways to model vehicles, we provide some additional details on the sort of model that would work for our current needs. We can then change the parameterization and create a test case. There is a really nice interaction with the agent here. 
we provide a very high level engineering query to set up a particular kind of test that is used to calibrate the representation of the vehicle load in our model. Note that we don't provide any additional details other than run a particular test and propose values that represent a typical vehicle based on the results. The agent then researches the test, figures out how to implement it in Dyad, and then runs the test trying different parameter values until it finds values that match a typical vehicle response. We also get nice summaries of the runs and the plots showing the various responses. The agent even updates the model with the calibrated parameter value. That's a huge amount of work that has been completely automated by the agent. Now that we have developed the individual components of our system model, we assembled the entire model that would be used to conduct virtual experiments for the brake system. We used the auto layout capability to generate the graphics for the model. Here we see the icons that we added to the individual component models. But this auto layout is not just a static layout. It represents the starting point for the engineer to continue working with the model graphically. Here you can see that this diagram is live. The components can be moved around the modeling canvas and the connections can be deleted, created, and modified. The system model, which was created entirely by the agent based on high-level queries from the engineer, is now fully implemented from reusable parameterized components and is fully graphical and ready to use in Dyad for ongoing development and experimentation. Depending on the experience level of the engineer and also their familiarity with the modeling tools, this entire modeling process could easily take a day or even more to accomplish. But here we have our answer in a matter of minutes. The future of engineering tools is here and it leverages AI as an integral part of the engineering workflow. Contact us at sales at juliahub.com if you have any questions or would like to try these tools.